forward helix piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Also going to cover what you should know beforehand, getting the piercing, healing the piercing, jewelry, living with the piercing, and what happens if you decide you don't want it anymore. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, Season 2, Episode number 8. So you probably should stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside the Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I've talked to you with a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. What are we going to talk about today? What we're going to talk about today is the forward helix piercing, um, also sometimes called the inner helix piercing. It is basically a piercing that goes through this flap uh, part of the helix at the front of your ear where it connects to your face, um, done at a 90-degree angle, basically straight through, depending on the uh, how that curves outward. As far as the history of this piercing, it's pretty much a modern invention. Uh, for the most part, uh, there's not really a lot of information about this piercing as far as where it came from, who did it first, all that other stuff. And uh, it kind of was just one of those piercings that was occasionally done. Um, but then oh, about 10 years ago or so, it suddenly became very popular Uh especially on the internet, uh, and kind of launched this whole drive towards a, a more unique ear piercings or what is called in the industry ear work and the trend that goes along with it. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna, first off, we're going to go through the pros and the cons, uh, starting with the pros, the advantages, things that we like about the piercings. Number one. This is a rare and unusual piercing. This is not a very common piercing. It is not a piercing you're going to see very often. Um, it's more rare than some other ear piercings. Uh, that doesn't mean it's completely out there and crazy. It's usually pretty socially acceptable, has a low profile. It's not really overly noticeable, but it's not something you're going to see every single day. Number two, this piercing fits well into the anatomy. It looks like it belongs there. It looks like it's part of what should be there. It's one of those parts of the body that kind of cries out for a piercing there. And if it's done correctly, it will fit and look natural and enhance the area. Number three, it draws attention to the start of the face. Basically, it draws attention to your eyes. It looks very symmetrical. It fits in and can kind of uh, add a little extra draw to that area. And like I said earlier, enhance it a little bit more. Number four, there's a lot of jewelry options with this one um, as far as ends, meaning there's uh, everything from simple balls all the way up to very expensive, very elegant uh, gym settings. You have a large variety to choose from. It has become a very popular piercing. Um, and that style of jewelry is one of the things that drives it and most of the other ear piercings. So you can get a lot of different styles. Number five, it can be done in groupings. Probably the most popular being the triple helix or the triple forward helix, I should say. I uh, Usually, depending on your anatomy, and your anatomy is very important with this, uh, it can be one or two or three, sometimes even four, depending on how large the area is and the shape of it because it kind of lays flat when it's towards the bottom and then kind of curves outward. So when you get to the top, it really doesn't work well to pierce that area or you have to use a different type of jewelry. The back tends to be more visible. So it really depends on your anatomy and what works with your body. Before we get on to the cons, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post a video. Also, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, especially if you found it useful or helpful. With that out of the way, let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages, the things that we don't particularly care for about this particular piercing, and the disadvantages are things that ain't so great. Starting with number one, it is a difficult piercing to isolate. Because of its location on the front of the ear, it is hard to keep things away from it, and it is hard not to make contact with that piercing. Um, from hair to makeup 
to sleeping to everything else, if you put your palm against your ear, it is one of those sections of the ear that's definitely going to make contact. So you really have to pretty much create the forbidden zone and, uh, you know, social distance it as much as possible during the healing process, especially, and sometimes even after the healing process, these can be sensitive to trauma. Number two, this can be a difficult piercing to heal. Uh, it does have a tendency to swell a lot. Um, it can be, uh, hair is constantly, I already mentioned that. It's one of those spots where hair tends to collect and wrap around jewelry and et cetera. It really is a piercing that is going to take a commitment, especially if you do a grouping of them. They can be a little tricky to heal out, and sometimes one will heal out fine and the other ones won't. So you need to really be diligent and definitely committed to this piercing. It's not kind of a, yeah, it sounds like a good idea, I'll try it. It's more of a commitment than other piercings. Number three, uh, anatomy. Uh, I kind of talked a little bit about this already, but anatomy is very important with this piercing. Uh, that that flap, if you kind of pay attention to it, it starts out pretty flat, almost inward, and then kind of rolls outward the further you get to the top. Um, also, there is the, uh, uh, the ridge that's underneath there that we pierce uh, rooks through, and there's a technical term for it, but I can't remember it at this very moment an anatomy term, that can get in the way of jewelry. So it kind of has to be spaced with that between it. Putting it against it, it, it can be kind of more difficult to heal or the jewelry will stick straight out and not have any place to rest. So it's definitely a piercing where you really have to have the correct anatomy. It varies greatly from person to person. Not everybody's going to do well with this piercing. Number four, probably the most popular of all cons, you can't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it during the healing process. Even after the piercing uh, is healed, you may have issues sleeping in that area, putting a lot of pressure on that area. It is definitely uh, a need to isolate it situation. And like I said, you need to keep things away from it. And the last one, number five. Wearing glasses or sunglasses, this can affect it depending on the style of glasses that you wear in the location of the piercing. Having that added pressure can cause problems. And since we are in the middle of the COVID pandemic, also mask wearing can be an issue too. Now with that all out of the way, let's talk about things you should look for. Uh, your piercer should be uh, experienced, professional, uh, informative, and make you feel at ease and comfortable. The piercer should give you some type of consultation that gives you a list of the risks involved, how it's going to be healed, and any other additional things that you should know to make an educated decision on whether or not this piercing is right for you. The piercer should evaluate your anatomy to see whether or not it's, uh, if you're able to get the piercing. They should also usually, I would suggest, and I highly suggest, this piercing is initially done with a standard barbell or straight barbell or a labre stud. Personally, I like the labre studs because they take up less room in the back. Uh, the disc can be, a, it can be very small, and it should be probably the smallest available. Uh, they should also suggest that the jewelry is oversized. It shouldn't be too small, um, and we'll need that extra room in case swelling occurs, which it probably will. Do they provide aftercare instructions written in verbal or, you know, at least uh, like we're doing right now during the pandemic, a video that details how to take care of it? I uh, Every time you get a piercing done, you should have, your piercer should provide some type of aftercare instructions or at least a brief rundown. And they should, uh, should also offer written instructions. And another thing you want to ask about is whether or not they sell or provide any type of aftercare product, uh, mainly like a uh, sterile saline solution. Do they sell that or do they know where to get it so that you kind of can plan ahead? One final thing, and this is kind of a more prepping for the piercing. If you have sideburns or you have what they call those baby hairs, that kind of whiskey stuff that sits along here, you really want to consider shaving it or cutting it or trimming it. It can really get in the way, not only of the piercing itself, but it's going to constantly get wrapped around that jewelry during the healing process. It is going to make it more difficult to not only get the piercing done, but it's going to make it more difficult even after the piercing is done and you're healing it. 
uh, those little wisps of hair just seem to have a mind of their own, and they go. They tend to go in all different kinds of directions. So consider trimming it or shaving it. Before we get into the piercing experience, let's talk about our merch store. We have very similar designs, T-shirts, and all kinds of other products. You can check that out. Links in the description. And all the money goes to help improve the channel. So think about that. Plus, you look cool wearing that stuff. And we've even got fanny packs. Now let's talk about the piercing experience itself. Uh, the first thing is, is when they have gone, first off, of course, they're going to disinfect the area, then they're going to mark it. Uh, during the marking process or before they begin to mark it, you need to talk to them if you are planning on, in the future, getting any additional groupings. Um, sometimes, as I always say, it's easier to to to, to do things on a blank canvas, uh, I, regardless of what it is. It's hard to go back and try to get things to match and work out after the fact so if you're planning on maybe getting two three of these talk to your piercer about that before they start marking actually ask them to mark the multiple uh placements they would suggest so you give an idea of what that pattern is going to look like and how much space there is usually this piercing is done with a needle receiving tube um sometimes a Something is placed underneath it, uh, underneath the tissue, just basically because it's kind of a short distance to travel there. It's a very tight space that we're, we're piercing into. So usually we need something in there to protect the uh, inside of your ear. So usually, uh, and it's usually done, this one can be a two push, meaning that the lance tip goes in part of the way, then it turns, and then it completes the piercing. Uh, basically, it's all about the distance, how much space is down there. Um, in most cases, especially uh, at least the way I do it, a taper pin is going to be involved in the insertion or a guide pin. Basically, we pierce it, push the needle out with a needle uh, with a uh, with a uh, taper pin, and then the taper pin hooks on the jewelry, and then we push it back through and up and close the jewelry. This can make insertion a little bit longer than usual. It can also add to bleeding that you might see. Um, sometimes people find that pressure of having that, that needle against the area and everything else a little uncomfortable, um, sometimes possibly a little worse than the actual piercing itself, but you need to be patient. It's going to take a little while to do that. As I mentioned, there probably will be some slight to moderate bleeding. That's normal. After the piercing is done, you're going to notice maybe a little bit of throbbing, aching, heat, um, for a few minutes, uh, afterwards is your body kind of reacts to the trauma. Uh, that should fade fairly rapidly. Um, you may experience that any time you have trauma, especially in the first couple of weeks. Uh, the piercing will be very sensitive to the touch. You want to stop touching it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Like I said, social distance yourself from the piercing, or at least uh, other people and anything that may come in contact with it. So, in other words, don't sit there and keep pushing it and go, why does it still hurt? Why, why does it still hurt? I don't understand why it still hurts. That's going to make it hurt, and that's going to prolong your healing period, and that's going to cause issues. So with that out of the way, let's move on to healing. Uh, average healing time on this one could be anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks or longer, during which time I'm going to suggest uh, cleaning it twice a day using a sterile saline solution. Personally, I like Nomad's piercing aftercare, the kind that comes out in a mist. Um, it's the easiest to use and uh, involves the least amount of flim-flammy, diddle-doddle whatever you want to call it, um, work. <laughs> that, that would be a way to put it. You also need to practice cross-contamination prevention. And when I say that, I mean uh, clean your hands before you, uh, before you have any contact with the area. No oral contact or exchange your bodily fluids on here around the piercing. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the area. No swimming. That means no swimming. That doesn't mean, hey, can I put something over it and swim? No, no swimming. I don't care what water it is. That includes all natural waters in pools and hot tubs. Uh, even the kiddie pool in your backyard that you just filled up 10 minutes ago. Do not submerge that piercing in there. Um, it, you're just asking for an infection. That water is full of contaminants, and it's probably going to cause problems. Keep pets away from it, especially small animals that like to sleep up by your face and steal your breath while you're sleeping. Uh, that contact, they tend to drag a lot of contaminants into the bed, um, and they contaminate your bedding, and then it comes in contact with the piercing, and then you get an infection. See how that works? 
Avoid contact with uh, telephones, headphones, earbuds, etc. Anything that's generally in the area you want to make sure is disinfected in a reg- on a regular basis. Also, the glasses, the cheaters. Make sure that you do clean the bows on a regular basis and disinfect them. We tend to handle them by the bows a lot and move them around and adjust them all the time. And we don't always wash our hands before we do that. So it's a good idea to just kind of disinfect them a couple times a day just to be on the safe side. One other thing, uh, make sure that your hair is dry by when it comes in contact with the piercing. Uh, do not put wet hair against the, the piercing. It's best to keep the hair away from the piercings while they're healing completely, especially in that first part of the acceptance period. Uh, they tend to just get caught in everything. Uh, the fact that it's usually a post jewelry with a ball or some type of setting on the top of it, it just makes it easier for them to wrap around it. So do not... Uh, make sure your hair is completely dry. If it is going to come in contact with it, if you can't get away with it, go ahead and pull it back and keep it away from the piercing for the whole healing period. Uh, during the healing, you want to avoid contact with the piercing and in trauma. I know I keep pounding this, pounding this in. Any slight pressure, contact, etc. All those things can be can be very harmful to healing tissue. It could cause piercings that seem to be healing perfectly fine to suddenly flare up get swollen, have nasty bumps, and be a complete disaster during the healing process. So keep things away from it, including your fingers and your hair and everything else. Once you get back to the hair thing again, consider trimming or cutting the hair that sits here, those whiskey little baby hairs and and sideburns and et cetera, until the piercing is healed. It's not a bad idea to trim them or cut them um, or shave them. Uh, for the first three to five days, it's not uncommon to have uh, redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of touch, inflammation, swelling, and maybe even some slight bleeding off and on for roughly about three to five days. What this is is the time period your body is reacting to the trauma and recovering from the trauma of the piercing itself. So this is normal. If it exceeds that or it happens later in the healing process, you definitely should contact your piercer. Do not sleep on the piercing. I, 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 I can drive this home 30, 40 times. Do not do it. I don't care how good it feels. I don't how bad it feels or it feels wonderful or it tickles. Don't do it. It's going to cause issues. I know somebody's going to post on here, I slept all night in the whole time and it healed fine. You're the exception. The majority of people are not going to have that type of success. The other thing is, is you either need to sleep on the other side or flat on your back like a vampire or you need to elevate it out the bed using something like a, a U-shaped travel pillow. The other thing is avoid contact with masks. Sometimes they tend to have a lot of pressure in that area, especially the really tight ones. Um, if you can find them, do the type that tie in the back or buy the clip thing that holds that pressure to the back and avoids the contact with the area. Now let's talk about living with the piercing. Um, the jewelry should be left in at all times, uh, only taking it out to replace it. This is especially true in the few, first few years, but even after you've had the piercing 10, 15 years, if you take it out and leave it out long enough, you're going to have problems getting it back in. This particular piercing, it can be a little bit more difficult to change jewelry. You may need to seek professional help. Avoid pressure and trauma against the piercing even after it heals. Uh, this is just like an upper ear cartilage or any cartilage or ear piercing or any piercing. It will react to trauma no matter how long you've had it. Uh, this idea that you can do anything you want to a healed piercing and it doesn't hurt, it doesn't react, is a farce. You have a hard, you have hard metal inside soft tissue. The thing it's going to give before the metal is the tissue. So always avoid contact even after the piercing is healed. Test wearing sunglasses and et cetera, you should probably even consider this, and I should have mentioned this during the piercing process and marking process. If you do wear glasses, bring them with you to the appointment. Um, do or what do you get pierced? Uh, do check that there isn't any pressure on the area. Uh, if you change the new frames or you're trying on new sunglasses or what have you, test them. Also, uh, because it really can make a difference with different brands and different styles. It depends on where the pressure points are of those glasses. Of course, the same goes for hats or anything else that comes in contact with the area. Um, Goggles, headbands, I don't know, beanies. Uh, Yeah, 
Fezes. Yeah, make sure if it does come in contact with the area that there's not a lot of pressure on the on the piercing itself. Test it is basically what I'm getting at. Also, uh, you should change loose or longer than needed jewelry uh, after the piercing is healed. Leaving longer jewelry in is just asking for it to get caught more often. Um, the other thing you should do is check the tightness of the balls on a regular basis. They can come in screwed, and they usually will at the worst possible time and land in the most disgusting thing near you. Even though jewelry options should have already been covered, I, I forgot them. I skipped them. So let's do it now. Jewelry options, this piercing, I basically you can change the jewelry once it heals. I would suggest for the first year or until you get used to it that you have it changed professionally. They can be very tricky. Uh, there's not a lot of room in there to grab things. You're dealing with a very tight, small place. So uh, you may have difficulty doing it on your own, especially if it's threaded jewelry. Even the push pin stuff can be really complicated. And part of the problem is getting the jewelry in the piercing in the first place. The jewelry should be snug, but it should be a little bit loose to allow for the widest part of that part of your anatomy. You should never have jewelry that puts pressure on the piercing or is too small. Your body's not going to shrink. Uh, it can cause damage on a healed piercing. It can cause impacting, scarring, all kinds of other problems. The other thing is, is Lebre or flat, that flat disc in the back has the lowest profile, tends to be the easiest to fit into the area of old types of jewelry that are available. Barbells will work, they just take up a little bit more room, and it's, if you have really small balls it's a, or ends, it's really going to be very minimal, but keep that in mind. Discs tend to be a little bit thinner, so they fit better. One thing, because uh, I know it's going to come up, rings. There's kind of a fashion right now to put really tiny rings in these. Uh, the problem is with rings is it they don't sit right usually if they're wider. Um, they need to be with this really small anatomy or small diameter, like a quarter inch or smaller. Uh, they look okay, I guess. And if your low, if your helix is kind of outward and not right up against that 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 ridge where the helix or where the rook is done, it might be okay. The thing is, is you really want to wait until the piercing is well seasoned, meaning that you've had it for a year or two to the point where it doesn't hurt anymore and doesn't have any issues. Changing the shape of that piercing from a straight line into a really sharp turn or curve could cause issues in a healed piercing. Um, if you do change the rings and you start noticing problems with your healed piercing, put the post back in. Uh, you're not ready to go to the ring, or your body's just not going to accept that jewelry in that piercing. And the last thing, abandoning the piercing. Um, if you get to the point where you say, I don't want this anymore, and you take it out, what'll happen is it'll it'll start closing initially in the inside and then slowly fill outward. What you'll notice is maybe a slight indentation scar on uh, on the front because you can't really see the back. That will, over time, fade, but it'll kind of look like the piercing's open. It's usually about the same size as the jewelry or thickness. Um, usually not very noticeable, uh, not any more noticeable than a uh, any ear piercing that's left empty. From time to time, you might see this substance that collects on that abandoned piercing, or you can squeeze it out of there, it seems like. It. And it's kind of cream cheesy and 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 smells weird. What that stuff is, is sebum. Uh, it is an oil that your body produces. It produces it sometimes inside piercings, sometimes more inside piercings in other parts of the body. It's really going to be more common in larger, thicker pieces of uh, piercings. Uh, ear piercings, not so much so, but they I've seen it. it it's possible. Uh, it's not something to be worried about. All it is is a natural product that comes out of your own body and probably a few dead skin cells. Just clean it with warm water and soap, and that's all you need to do. It is not a sign of infection. Well, that's all we have on piercings in the cons and all the other stuff to deal with a forward helix piercing. I hope by now you have enough information that you can make an educated decision on whether or not it's a piercing for you. Till next time. Here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.